Hey guys, Habitat for Bats here. Wanted to go through our assembly video for our two chamber kit. A uh, little bit longer video. I'm going to take my time and walk you through the full assembly of the two chamber kit so you can follow along, pause at any time, skip forward, whatever you like. Now I have my director over here that's taking care of things and uh, he's decided that he likes my chair. Been there, I've been here. So we'll stay on track. We got the director keeping us here, keeping everything in line. Uh, you remind me if I need to add any details or anything there. Okay, we've got the kit opened up. This is the two chamber kit, step by step assembly. We're going to need a drill driver. Going to need some caulk and a caulk gun. You can also get the little tube caulk. Any type of exterior latex paintable caulk will be fine. Our director's deserted. Uh, any, any exterior latex paintable caulk will be fine. I happen to be using uh, something we use a lot here is a polyurethane sealant for roofing and flashing. Uh, it does a, a good job, but it's not necessary. Just a good exterior latex caulk will do it. Uh, we'll set these components to the side here. Now, if you've not seen our introduction video, we do a dry fit in that might want to watch the introduction video to see the dry fit. We're going to go straight to assembly. So we start with the back face down on the table. The roosting grooves that are cut in are face up. We've got the slot showing and take each side, check to make sure there's no sawdust trapped in here, anything left over. Also check the slots, make sure there's no sawdust in them. There may be a, a cake of sawdust or something that would prevent the tab from going in the slot. Just uh, clean that out. You can take the tip of the, the screwdriver if you need to and clean it out, the tip of the screw. Uh, it's rare, but sometimes it does get in there and make it a little more difficult to put together. Start by laying the sides out. And what we're going to do is the side goes on so that this cut bevel matches the slope of the roof. I'll turn that so you can see it there. This is how the side goes on so that it is flush to the outside right here and the slope matches this and this we're going to keep even as we go here. This it's going to be important that this bevel is even to the bottom of this slot. We don't want it too high and we don't want it too low that would leave a gap. Now the tab and slot is fairly precise but it does allow for a little bit of adjustment on purpose to allow you to align it perfectly. So we're going to want to make sure as we go through that that stays that way. But take the caulk and on the side that goes into the back just run a bead of caulk. It doesn't take much just to seal it. A bead of caulk right down this side. I got this tube turned wrong, the bevel, there we go. Okay, there's where you're going to put the caulk. Just do the one side for right now. Put it into the slot and push down. You can wiggle it back and forth. Again, check this top, make sure it stays flush. It's going to be important to keep checking that as you go. Now, it won't matter until you start putting the screws in, but as long as you keep checking it as you go, you won't end up with a gap or worse. If it's too high, it won't go together. You'll have to undo it and slide it down. Now, we're going to do the side on the other side of the bat house. Again, this is the wrong way. We want to do it this way. This is the right way. So once that's in, just pick it up and put another bead of caulk down on the bottom here. Again, it doesn't take a lot of caulk, just enough to kind of fill it up there. Put it in and push down, wiggle it back and forth. You can check that to make sure that it's flush. It is. That looks good. Now we're ready to put the front of the bat house on. So for the front, it's going to go on like this. So we want to apply the caulk to the top here and here, just like we did on the back. Basically the same place, but on the front. And just draw that bead from the top to the bottom. Get 
Okay, and that'll take care of that. Let me show that to you real quick. That's just where the caulk goes before we put the front on. Okay, now putting the front on can be a little bit tricky. It's not bad usually. Uh, just kind of lay it down. You may have to, to pull the side over, push the front over, move it around, do the same for the other. And just be careful as you're doing it not to pinch your fingers. Sometimes when this is up and you're pushing on it, you can get your finger in there and it will pinch your fingers. So let's avoid doing that. Probably won't take your finger off or anything, but it'll wake you up if nothing else. When the top goes on, make sure it's got a good fit. Now the top's a little different than the back as we're going to want to slide it up. We're going to want about an eighth of an inch overhang of the front to the side. And I'll let the cameraman there zoom in on that for you. Because this is important. This is what's going to let the roof fit into the back slot and onto the front of the roof. We don't want that flush. We want it to be proud of this side bevel. So check that on both sides. Make sure that it's right. Okay. Now we're ready to put the screws in. So before we put the screws in, take one more moment, check to make sure that the back is flush here, that it didn't get moved, that the front's proud. Same thing over here. So we're making sure that it's flush here and that we've got an eighth of an inch overhang here. Okay, that's really about the hardest part of putting this kit together is just remembering to check that. Now the screws that we use are self-drilling and they also countersink themselves. So take your driver drill and the first couple that you do you'll have to kind of get the feel for it. You don't want to drive them too deep, but you want to drive them deep enough that they're flush. Now these screws have uh, a Phillips head on them, and they'll also take a square driver if you happen to have one of those, like furniture screws take. So you can use either the square drive, which is what I like to use because it has a little more bite, but a Phillips driver on it will work as well. So just put that in. We'll check this again, make sure that it's right. Push down and then just screw that in until the head is flush or just slightly lower than the surface is fine. Now that it's in place, we just repeat that for the rest. And you can assemble this using a regular screwdriver. Uh, it is, uh, wouldn't be high on my list of favorite things to do. <laughs> especially not more than one, but it can be done. You can screw these in with a regular screwdriver with just a little bit of effort. Now those are in, it's easy enough. We just repeat on the other side. Again, check the alignment of the parts. They're good. So we put the screws in. screws in the front it's time to put the baffle in okay you can see the top of the bat house here is open these slots are free and we're going to put the baffle in you'll note it also has the roosting grooves on it uh, you don't have to wipe that off that's fine the bats won't have any trouble with it that's just burring from the machining process a little bit of chips or sawdust on it won't be a problem at all. Uh, the only time that's an exception, if you do find uh, something sticking up over here on the side, as you're putting it in, if you find it's difficult and it's not sliding in, take it out and just check the edge to make sure that uh, wood chip or something hasn't turned up that's jamming it. Uh, it's rare, sometimes that happens. Uh, you just slide this into the slot all the way down. Now this baffle is free to float, 
So as you're handling the bat house later, you'll notice it'll move to the top, it'll move to the bottom, but it should be free to float. Once you hang the bat house, you can reach in and pull down on it, make sure it's all the way to the bottom and gravity will hold it in place. That's not a problem. Now that the baffle is slid in with the round side up, we're ready to put the roof on. Now for the roof, we're going to want to caulk the entire area, the entire perimeter, where the roof is going to go on so that we get a nice watertight seal. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. You can put a bead of caulk down here in the back or you can put it on the back of the roof panel before you put it in. That's up to you. This is the way I kind of prefer to do it is to do the bottom first. Now I do the bottom first so I'm not, I don't have caulk all up here getting all over my caulk gun. Uh, if you're using a tube of caulk, it might be a little easier to fit in here, but this works. We'll do that. We we'll want to make sure we get on the sides here. Nice bead on the side, and we'll do a bead here right on the roof area on the front panel itself. And if you get too much caulk, that's fine. It'll just squeeze out. You can wipe it off immediately, or you can wait for it to dry and just peel it off usually, especially if it's, if it's latex. Okay, that's how you caulk for the roof. Let the cameraman zoom in on that so you can see. That's how you would caulk for the roof. Okay. Now, when putting the roof panels on, you'll notice that one of the roof panels is longer than the other. And the way that we form the peak is kind of a fold cut. You do this, you pull it out, and that's how we form the peak on the bat house. It doesn't go like this. It goes like this. This gives us a, a more watertight seal that's less likely to open up over time. But we start with the longer panel. I like to start with the longer panel. I'll show you why as we go and you drop it into the back slot there, pull it all the way up, okay? So you can see that it's in that back slot, had to push it down. Now at this point, you should be able to see how it's fitting on this front panel. It's actually gonna drop over and onto that front panel. So you'll push that down. Now, if you have any trouble with this going down, sometimes this panel has a slight warpage to it, which is fine. You may need to push down on this front panel or reach in and pull up on the front panel a little bit, but it will go on. You can see that just slid right in. And this panel I like to put on first, and that's how that panel fits. And when you're facing the bat house, this is the right side. Okay. Now here's one of the reasons that I like to put that panel on first is we still need to caulk this peak and an easy way to do that is on the short side before you install it, just run one more bead of caulk here. Just like that. We're going to install it just like we did the front panel. Only this time we'll leave a little bit of a gap here and we'll fold it on and we've left a gap. Now I just gently, I'm not holding this down or pushing down, I'm just gently pulling it forward to close that gap up. Now that seals that gap and it's okay if this panel is a little proud of this one, you can pull that back down if you want to, you can leave it a little proud, won't matter. But we'll double check the fit of everything. And then we'll put the screws in. Now I'm trying to keep this turned so that you can see what I'm doing here. Again, I like to start on the right panel, just check the fit, make sure it's pushed down, pull it in, make sure it's good, and then just put the screw in. Now the thing to remember when you're putting these screws in the panel is that you need to be perpendicular to this roof surface and level. You don't want to go down or up because you'll go out the inside or come out the front of the bat house panel. And you don't want to go straight down because you'll end up with the head of the screw not being able to be flush to the roof panel itself. So we want to keep that perpendicular. 
and just tighten that down until the head of the screw is flush. It'll pull right in. Do the same thing here. There we go. Nice and flush. Now for the roof, you can actually overdrive them a little bit is fine so that they're recessed and you'll have room to put caulk on top of them. But they do need to at least be flush. Now we'll pull the short panel up, make sure it's got a tight fit. And we'll put the screws in there. There we go. Same thing over here. There we go. Now the front's done and we're going to want to turn this over face down so that we can continue. But be careful doing that because remember we haven't put the screws in the back yet. So if I try to pick this up here, it's going to come apart. The back panel will, can actually fall off. So what we want to do is grab it by the back panel so that we have a hold of it and turn the entire bat house over again. Now support the weight under here, not by just the back panel so it doesn't fall off. Now that it's turned over, all of these holes can be uh, utilized to put the screws in. Now, if you get to this point and you think a hole is missing, look real close, feel with your finger. There can be a little fleck of plywood left. Sometimes the, the drill doesn't go all the way through and it'll leave a, a smooth surface here with a little fleck of plywood and you can find it and just punch that out and then put the screw in. So now we just go through and use all the screws to finish the assembly. And that's really it for the main assembly. The bat house is now together. All the screws are in. All the joints are caulked. At this point, what I recommend you do is take your caulk and finish sealing the roof panel. We're going to put a, a bead of caulk around the outside right up under here. Just a small bead. And this will help with the weatherproofing. We'll also do that on the roof part here. Again, just a small bead, kind of push it down in there. That'll take care of that. And then up under the edge as well. Now this is less susceptible to rain and moisture, but we're going to do that. Just put that there. And right back here, if we need a little, we can do that. Same thing on this side. Now when I finish this, I'm going to use my finger to kind of smooth it out. And feel free to go around the bat house, wherever you see, if there's a gap. Uh, sometimes there's gaps in the plywood itself. Uh, we use uh, ACX uh, high quality plywood uh, that's exterior, has exterior glue in it so it won't delaminate over time. Uh, but sometimes you'll find a little gap uh, in the plywood, it's, they're called voids. And those are normal but you can just squirt a little bit of caulk in there if you happen to encounter one and smooth that off. And the screw heads themselves, again let me turn that around. What I like to do on the roof especially, I don't really do it on the fronts, paint is fine, but on the roof I like to put a little caulk down over those screws. And once the caulk dries, if you find an area you missed or if it shrank a little bit, created a, a divot, you can always come back and add a little bit more caulk uh, even after you paint and paint over it again, but especially before you paint. And at this point, I, I just use my finger. You can use a, a putty knife if you have one to smooth it off. Uh, whatever is available, even a stick of wood, a paint stirrer works. Um, for the crevices, again, I just like to use my finger, run down to make a nice 
smooth bead. The part that I'm doing now is really more about appearance. This could dry, you could paint over it and it would be just fine. And from 15 feet in the air from across the yard it would look the same really, but uh, I figure if I'm going to do something I might as well take the time and do it and make it look right. We'll do that bead on the front there. And all it is doing is rounding over that bead. Uh, it does push it in a little bit too, so get it in the crevice there. Now most exterior latex caulks will cure in about 30 minutes to an hour before you can paint them. Just check the manufacturer's recommendations on that. Uh, this polyurethane adhesive happens to take 24 hours, so it'll have to sit. Let me get another paper towel here. Hey, Ben Ben. You taking care of the floor for me? I appreciate that. Okay, does get a little messy, so it's good to have paper towels around. And now for the bat on the front, if you choose to put that on, you can put that on now by smearing caulk on the back of it. Put it where you want it. There are two nails that you can use to take a small hammer and tack those in place. Uh, you can also give this to the kids to paint, put it on a shelf, uh, whatever you want to do with it. The position on the front doesn't matter. Uh, a lot of people, especially when we do the kids' workshops, they put them on upside down because bats hang upside down. Uh, put them down here, anywhere. That's up to you. Um, I like to actually put them on after they're painted, then the full body's painted, then I'll put a little caulk on, put it on, and I'll paint the bat a different color than the bat house itself. So if the bat house is a dark brown, I could paint this a light tan or something, something different. So the bat house is together. There is a finishing guide to talk about the paint. We also have videos about finishing if you want to look those up. And once it's finished and painted, you're going to want to hang it. There's a screw hole here at the very top for you to use. And we also recommend putting a screw or a bolt in the landing pad itself. You can use the bat down here to kind of find center for it. But anywhere along here you can drill and put in screws. And anywhere along the top, if you're going on a structure with it or if you need to, to put a screw somewhere else, feel free to do that. Just make sure that it's uh, hung up and secure and good to go. So we hope you enjoyed building our two-chamber bat house. I enjoyed building it with you. If you have any questions, let us know. And you can check out this kit on our e-store at e-store.habitatforbats.org. Thanks for watching.